Hi YouTube, welcome back to my YouTube channel. It's Angelica here. If you're new, then come in, have a seat, have several seats. And if you're not new, thank you for having me once again, all up on your screen. In this video, I'm gonna be discussing how I got a vacation scheme in my first year at a Magic Circle law firm, also known as Clifford Charlie. So I'm gonna be making a lot more of these videos specifically about the firms I have had work experience in. I'm going to be discussing what I did before I applied and what I did when I was applying. Clifford Chance had this program called the Springboard Vacation Scheme which you could apply for in your first year and with a vacation scheme you can convert it to a training contract. So it's a really good opportunity. Um, I think they've renamed it and now it might be called Spark. And as part of the program, they fly you out to another country um, to experience one of Clifford Chance's firms. So during my intake, the trip was to Amsterdam, but the intake before me, it was to Paris. First thing I did, I didn't make like a firm decision of like, this is what I'm gonna do for the rest of my life. But like, I did some internal reflection about what type of, Things I'm interested in as for a career um, and commercial law absolutely stands out to me. And then I would recommend you do some research about the firms you're interested in. So this involves just looking into the practice areas that, that they're really strong in, look at their awards, where do they rank in the league table, the people who work there, the deals that they've done recently, open days, I'd been to Clifford Chance a number of times, that's a really good way to do your research because then you can speak to people. This is different from looking at a website because like the website they're gonna tell you yeah we're amazing but like you want to actually go and see for yourself I will be the judge of that so <laughs> um, I strongly strongly recommend maybe going to employee presentation if they come to your campus so Clifford Chance goes to so many campuses they have their target university try as much to interact with the firm they might have a competition going on like even if it's like pro bono work because like Clifford Chance does run some pro bono um, opportunities and projects with LSE. Prior to you actually getting a vacation scheme, there's so many ways to get involved. Okay, so once I did that, um, I planned my application. So for me, this just involved researching uh, the deadlines, knowing what the application process is, making an Excel spreadsheet and basically like write down the firms you want to apply to you, write down whether or not they have like an online form, whether they want a CV, whether they want a cover letter, um, do they do lots and laser tests, interviews, assessment centres, which type of interviews do they do, is it phone, is it in person, is it video, some firms might even ask you for a numerical test, honestly, I know, <laughs> I know, like some firms won't take people in their first year, it helps for you to be aware so you don't waste your time applying, so then, after that, um, I actually decided to apply. I know, shocking, right? Um, so what went into my application? So the online form had different sections. Um, the first section was the personal details. Of course, you know, what's your name? Where do you live? What's your number? How can we contact you? Blah, 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 blah. I think the second stage would have been um, about my university, but I'm not, like, don't quote me on this. I don't remember what particular um, order it was in. Obviously I put LSC and I put Oxford there. I think they asked me about like prizes and scholarships. They asked me about my affiliation to the firm. So have I ever done any program at Clifford Chance? Did, you, did I do the work experience program called Prime? And I said um, yes I have and I explained what I gained from the program. Then there was the work experience section and I really enjoyed this part because it enabled me to show my breadth of interest and experience so so i'd recommend that you whatever you write is very like highly detailed so for instance instead of just writing oh i'm a sales assistant are you doing the stock counting um are you resolving queries what type of queries is it billing queries like was it conflict resolution what did your job actually involve and give results try to quantify things try to use numbers if you can so how many people did you interact with on a daily basis go into detail more about what you gained and learned and demonstrated in your work experience and one thing I also did was that I used a lot of variety so I used some of my law work experience from the past I used some of my finance work experience like other programs I've done I tried to put like maybe like 40 40, 60 or 50, 50 in terms of like law work experience versus non-law but honestly it doesn't matter if you don't have any law work experience then 
don't feel like you are at a disadvantage. It's about the transitional skills that you have gained. And I don't think there was a limit of how many work experiences you can include. So you can just keep clicking add, <laughs> add new work experience, add new work experience, add new work experience. But you don't want to overdo it. On my Clifford Chance application, I think I put like seven. Um, but now that I've done a lot more than I did in my first year, I'm probably going to like end up um, put in a bit more if I had to do the application again. The next thing they asked me was for a personal statement. The maximum I could write was 600 words. So I spoke about my proudest achievement. At the time, my proudest achievement was becoming the young mayor of my borough. I gave as much detail as I could about what my role involved as a young mayor and why I was proud about it. Then I spoke about positions of responsibility. Um, that I'd had in the past and I also spoke about causes I care about. Um, I spoke about like my role in the Oxford African and Caribbean Society as a junior officer for access and outreach and um, so I was able to like share a personal story and then link it to how I have assumed positions of responsibility. I also spoke about an organization that I had founded at the time called Sophia Foundation and what that involved. So I spoke about drama as an extracurricular and what I have achieved um, through acting. Then I spoke about being an expressive person and being a um, creative person and writing for my friend's blog. The biggest thing to take away from my personal statement was the fact that I had different themes and I grouped them up in paragraphs and I didn't speak about lots of different things. So I had like four main things I wanted to get them like get across. So I'd recommend you Think about what do you want them to think like what do you want them to remember you for what are the four or maybe five things you want to connote when they read your personal statement you don't have to speak about work experience in this section because you already have a section for work experience so i'd strongly recommend that you um just speak about you and like think about your character and then i had a watson glazer test and the watson glazer test had like I think five different sections that was testing different things, inference, recognising assumptions, deduction, interpretation and evaluation of arguments. So I'd recommend you obviously search up what this means, like final practice test, they will explain to you like this is how you make an inference, this is how you make a deduction. So I'd recommend you start practising like maybe two, three weeks before you start applying for vacation schemes because I tried my best not to like second guess things because um, honestly like it's the worst when you think there are two right answers but there's only one right answer but you don't know which one that is then it's like where do we go from here it's so, like don't be like undecisive just pick what you think is right because oftentimes you will be correct sometimes you might be timed so yes this clip a chance test was timed um, some firms don't time their tests that's why I said earlier you should do your research as to what the application process is they score you according to the um, the cohort of people basically like you you get put in a percentile I didn't know that I should have had adjustments in my Watson Glazer test I will discuss that in another video one day when I feel ready but um, yeah I didn't know because <laughs> I only found out that like hey adjustments are a thing and actually I've been in, I've been in time to adjustment all my life but like I only found out last year so like and this was way after I had done the Watson Glazer test so um, yeah if you are entitled to adjustments if you have like a disability or a condition then absolutely get your adjustments so now the next stage of my application was that I went to an assessment center I got invited um, and they told me in advance like when to arrive I think they told me what the structure is gonna be like structure of the day I had an interview then I had a case study exercise then I had a presentation, then I had another interview. My first interview was with a senior associate and it was a competency based interview and we kind of did go off on a tangent. Um, I asked him questions about himself. Um, it was more like back and forth in a weird way. It was a genuine conversation. I ended up messaging him to say thank you for the interview. It was great to meet you. Then he messaged me by email after I got the offer and he gave me feedback. He was just such a lovely guy and he was funny as well because like, at the beginning 
he was telling me that like I know this is gonna be boring <laughs> I know like we have to ask you some set questions I know it's so boring but like ju let's just get it over and done with so like he was really funny then the case study was basically like just like a legal problem but not even necessarily a legal problem like a commercial problem I had to write an email addressing what I thought like the main issues are and what can be done. I was timed and I was in a room full of other interns, it's not interns of course, other prospective vacation schemers, so people who were also applying. Think from the point of view of a prospective lawyer, they're trying to assess how well would you perform as a lawyer, but then that doesn't mean you have to know everything. It's like you just need to honestly like have basic comprehension and a bit of curiosity and a bit of like creativity in solving problems so with everything try and provide a solution and if you can't provide a solution for all the issues that were in the case study say what you need in order to be able to solve the issue say like oh we're missing this evidence i structured my answer could i use subheading and i didn't make my email too long i had to present it as well so i had five minutes to um present what I had written in that email so it was printed out I gave my presentation in front of a partner and after that I had an interview right after that presentation just discussing the technical things I decided to stand up in my presentation and I decided to use a um is it called a chart a chart chart a chart stand like a chart stand I think you guys know what I'm talking about I use like a flip chart flip chart that's the word gosh flip chart um so yeah I used a flip chart just to like illustrate my point so write down the main point although it's just one partner don't present like it's just one person present like you're presenting to like a uh, a panel of pa of partners like take it very seriously I made sure I timed myself on my phone so I didn't run over then after that I had my interview with the partner and it was very technical she asked me questions of like things I didn't know mortgaging and stuff like that that I had not come across in my first year and my main advice for that is just like honestly be receptive don't be stubborn like if, if the partner tells you like are you sure you don't need to like double down in that moment they might be trying to just like guide you to what they think was the more appropriate answer think of it as a tutorial think of it as a teacher literally teaching you and even if you don't think you did well make sure you leave that room feeling like you have gained something from that that was my experience in securing a vacation scheme my first year of studying law at LSC. Please leave a thumbs up button if you want more of this type of content and leave a comment below and make sure you connect with me on my other social media channels. I'll see you all in my next video. Bye!